The pinnacle of supersonic achievement has to be the world's only commercial supersonic transport. Concorde is absolutely unbeatable in her class. 21 years after she entered service with British Airways and Air France, she is still the only jet airliner that will fly you from London to New York in less than three and a half hours. It will be a long time into the next millennium before any commercial aircraft beats that record. Like all supersonic aircraft, Concorde owes her lineage and legacy to a single event high above the Californian Mojave Desert in 1947, just one month after the United States Air Force was officially born. Captain Chuck Yeager had flown P-51 Mustangs in World War II, and when he strapped on this fiery little winged rocket motor, he propelled himself and the US Air Force through the sound barrier for the first time in history. In Chuck Yeager's hands, the Bell XS-1 opened the door to supersonic flight on the 14th of October 1947. It broke the Mach 1 limit and set a world speed record of 670 miles per hour. That paved the way for the US Air Force to bring into service the world's first swept-wing jet fighter capable of supersonic flight, the North American F-86 Sabre. The prototype Sabre flew for the first time just 14 days before Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier. And two years later, an F-86A like this one set a world speed record of 671 miles an hour. That was one mile an hour faster than the rocket-powered Bell XS-1. And the big advance for the Sabre was the swept wing and tailplane, swept back at an angle of 35 degrees. That allowed it to get closer to the speed of sound with less of the serious buffeting that other aircraft suffered from. Sabre could reach Mark 0.9 in level flight and it was easily supersonic in a dive. It became the most famous combat aircraft of its day and more than 9,500 of them were produced and sold all over the Western world. Britain's answer to the American supersonic challenge was the Hawker Hunter. In 1953, the Hunter broke the Sabre's world speed record with a speed of 727 miles an hour. Hunter is always thought of as the classic example of the airman's dictum, if it looks right, it flies right. And it was, and still is, one of the all-time favourites with jet pilots. This particular aircraft was an export model operated by the Swiss Air Force, but it's now in the colours of the Royal Jordanian Air Force and operated by the Jordanian Historic Flight. One of the big names in British supersonic flight was Brian Trubshaw. Well, in fact, my, my first experience of flying supersonically at all was in a Swift, which was actually being tested, of course, mainly by our pilots and from Supermarines, where I was Vickers at Weybridge at the time. But I always remember the flight because I was doing my first trip in a Swift. I said to uh, Mike Lithgow, who, of course, was the head pilot on the Swift, that uh, what would he recommend for this trip? And he said, well, if I were you, I should climb up to 35,000 feet, roll the aeroplane on its back, and then pull the stick back. That's exactly what I did. And in the, in the subsequent dive, it was my first exposure to actually going supersonic. When I got um, assigned to the Concord program, we did a lot of uh, especially organized supersonic flying. Uh, we used to go and fly lightnings. We were very lucky that in France they let us have a Mirage 4 and a Mirage 3, plus a number of other airplanes. And I actually did um, 10 hours in a B-58 uh, out of Edwards Air Force Base. And of course it was quite an old airplane when one thinks it was in the 50s and it was a Mach 2 bomber. Anyway, it put one in good shape for flying Concorde, which of course was um, well a real new thing altogether. And uh, getting that airplane up to fly at twice the speed of sound was quite a big achievement. Concorde appeared at Fairford in her controversial new colour scheme, commemorating the Silver Jubilee of British Airways. <laughs> 